I'm sorry, Susan, but as you can see, there's no mistake. Her name is Jennifer Pierce. She's a model, came out here three months ago to start a new ad campaign. Neil's got her in a motel room on the Pacific Coast Highway, the El Dorado. Susan, I know this hurts, and I'm sorry. I only hired Mr. File after every alternative had been explored. The only alternative you didn't explore was to come to me about it before putting it on film. Susan, you have to understand. There's a responsibility that goes with wealth. You're trying to destroy a marriage. You've been suspicious of Neil from the very beginning. It appears I had good reason. I don't know what to do. My instinct is to stand by Neil. I'm trying to do what your father would do if he were alive. Protect you. Well, don't. Because I'm going to protect my marriage. And my husband. people still at it? We have to do this, you know, Mr. Collins. Once a year, it's in the will. We're uh, working as fast as we can. Count every penny. Hi. Hey, I tell you, these yearly audits make me a wreck. Not that there's anything to be nervous about, but just having those gray-suited robots hanging around really gets to me. Well, if you hadn't married a padway. I know, I know. I wouldn't have any money to audit. Or an investment firm. Or a house at the beach. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm not the sensitive type. <laughs> okay. Anything happening? Uh, yeah. The bank called. How many guesses do I get? One should do it. My account is overdrawn. Again. Yeah. They paid the checks, but they would very much appreciate a deposit to cover as soon as possible. That's right. Trouble with having your wife as your biggest client is that... Her relatives always have bloodless bookkeepers in the background to double-check your figures. Speaking of your wife, she called twice. What did you tell her? Just what you told me. She were having a long lunch with a client. By the way, your wife's uncle has been going over the audit sheets very carefully. Phyllis? Yeah? Call my house. Tell them I'll be home for dinner. Right. Then I told him if I had to listen to that unbelievably long story about how his blocked field goal won the 1953 Rose Bowl game again, the least he could do is buy a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of stock. That way I could nail down some commissions. It's like uh, the price of boredom. You can deduct it. You write down one boring lunch, $23. The income tax people love it. Well, darling, if your luncheons are so boring, why subject yourself to them? What? Well, why spend time drumming up new business? 
Your commissions from our account are more than enough for us to live on. Not our account, your account. Neil, that's a mere technicality. You know that. What's mine is yours. Tell that to your trustees. The trustees are just abiding by Father's will. Quarterly account checks, yearly audits by a dozen accountants going over the books with magnifying glasses. I'm your husband, remember? I remember. Then why don't they? You know, all I'm doing is trying to invest your money wisely, make it grow. And I really don't need a lot of people looking over my shoulder while I'm doing it. Well, they're just doing their job. My father wanted to make sure that our money was passed on to our children, if any. How many children do you want? Six, eight, ten? You, you know you're hitting a nerve. Let's start working on it right now. You serve are very discreet. Jennifer, I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to talk to you, too. And it's got to be the middle of the night. I just wanted you to know that we'll have it just the way we want it soon. Very soon. Sure. Tell me tomorrow. I can't see you tomorrow. I won't be going to the office. I'm going to be working on the solution to our problems. Whatever makes you happy. I love you, darling. I really do. Me too. Susan, wake up. Wake up. I just had a terrific idea. Let's go to Malibu right now. Darling, it's past midnight. Let's get out to the beach. Let's go where we had such fun, where we were so happy at first. Let's go back, take a quick look at the past before we start out on a better future. Oh, darling, we can't. I mean, we can, but the contractor called. The pavilion goes in tomorrow. It's not going to be very romantic with bulldozers in the backyard. A bulldozer, my love, won't make me even momentarily nervous. I'll have you, and we just close the shutter. Oh, Neil, listen, it's so late. Let's get up early and drive out. We can plan a little and take what we need. But that's the fun of it, my love. Let's just do it now. Put on your coat and shoes and let's go. Come on. Let's make a crazy decision and stick with it. Just for ourselves. Well, if you're so determined... Yeah, I am. Grab just what you need. I'll get some papers from downstairs and uh, we'll take your car with the optional moonroof. And we will glide through the night to a lover's hideaway. I never knew I married Lord Byron. Oh, yeah. And Shelley and Keats and Don Juan, all in one. You got yourself a bargain, baby.
Well, that's that. Peace and quiet gone forever. At least they start on time. That's good. Though I still think putting in a pavilion is a waste of money. Darling, if we ever decide to sell the house, we'll have one more of those irresistible features. Well, if they start promptly, they'll finish the same way. I hope, I hope, I hope. Anyway, they can't work after dark. I better make that telephone call. Oh? Yeah. If I get Ellen now, she can invite someone else to lunch. You're not going to cancel. Well, wouldn't you on your second honeymoon? <laughs> well, ideally, yes, of course I would, my love. However, I've got a pile of work to do. And if I threw it today, we will have the rest of the week free to do whatever tickles your fancy. You mean you want me to go? Well, I hate it. But better now than later. Well, if you really... All right. Uh, it'll give me a chance to pick up some groceries on the way into town. I'll stop at Jack's. He'll deliver whatever we need. Oh, do me a favor. Of course. Take a cab into town. A cab? Yeah. Driving down last night, I felt a big wobble, a lot of extra play in your car. I'd rather keep it here today and run it into Carl's for a checkup, probably get new tires. Oh, darling, cab will cost a fortune. I tell you what, I'll drive with extra care, okay? Tomorrow, when we don't have any place to go, we'll put it in the garage. No, sweetheart. I really would rather keep it today. I'd worry about you all day long, driving back in traffic and having to make all those stops, you know. Well, the taxi will cost $20. I'd say that's the cheapest investment we could ever make. And if you stopped to think about it, you'd say the same thing. That's true. All right. If it means that much to you. It does, my love. It really does. It's very pretty. It's just been so hard, Ellen. Trying to keep a face on it all when I keep seeing that film. How do you feel now? About Neil, I mean. Well, he's been so solicitous lately. He can always reach me when he wants to. Sometimes I feel absolutely helpless. Does all that mean love still? I guess it does. Well, then let me tell you something, Susan. Fight for him. Reach in your bag and pull out whatever sensational secret little trick you got. A good marriage isn't something you throw away easily. I know. I never told you, but Brad was seeing a girl about three years ago. Brad? And he wasn't nearly as good at covering it up as Neil has been. I wanted to kill them both. I used everything. I used our children. I used our past. I used our money. I used my body. It was worth it, Susan. I told Uncle Joe that I'd fight. Well, then do it. If it counts, and you know it does, you have to work at it to keep it.
Hello. Neil? Hi, darling. Listen, I'm running a little late. Well, Ellen's running a little late. Uh, anyway, we'd like to make a few more stops, and I thought... Oh, they did. Oh, good. Well, darling, you won't forget to put the milk in the refrigerator, will you? Now, you're sure you don't mind? If you could wait till I get home, I could cook up... Oh, well, we'll eat anywhere. You know Ellen. Uh, should be around 9 o'clock. No, no, later. All right, Lord Byron. Oh. Bye, darling. Susan Collins. Girls have been better taken care of, haven't they? We're saving for a rainy day. I'm not going to step aside gracefully. You won't have to. Pretty soon, there just won't be anybody at your side. You're very beautiful. Why, Neil? Look, I'm not after Neil. It just happens that we fell in love. An affair, perhaps. Love, no. If that's what you want to believe. I'm afraid I have a little distressing news for you. Neil is waiting for me right now at our beach house. We came down last night at his suggestion. At the beach house? We've had a lot of good times there in the past. Neil wanted more of them. He wanted more of me. So if I were you, Miss Pierce, I'd begin looking for someone more available. Neil is going to marry me. And it doesn't make any difference what he tells you. He probably has to. Or... Oh, no, don't make that mistake. It's not the money. Be honest, Mrs. Collins. When was the last time that you and your husband made love? Last night. I don't believe that. You don't have to. But it's true. Not until I've heard it from Neil will I believe it. I know how you must feel. And I feel sorry for you. If I can be of some help. If you need some money, get out of here. Sergeant, I'm sure the common sense approach works for some people, but Susan doesn't go to movies alone or drop in on friends. Well, what do you mean 24 hours? Anything could happen in that time. All right. She's 28, 5 feet 4 inches tall, blonde hair. She was driving a blue Mark IV, a new one, with a sunroof. Well, 
couldn't you just nose around or anything? I mean, check the hospitals or something? I'm really getting worried. I'd appreciate that, Sergeant. I really would. It's 555-6161. Five, 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 six, one, six, one. And thanks. Thanks very much.
told me. Neil, what's the matter? You look terrible. Neil, for heaven's sakes, lie down. You're shaking. No, I... It's all right, Susan. Really, I'm fine, I guess. I'm going to call the doctor. N no. It's all right. I guess I've just been pushing too hard. Phyllis brought out some last-minute work today, and... I'm not even sure I had lunch. Oh, darling, I feel awful. I'll make you a cup of soup. Sweetheart, I'm not hungry so much as just beat. Please, I, I'll be fine. You sure? It'll only take a minute. I'm sure. Ah, I, I'm sorry about the vase, darling. Oh, Neil, that's not important. Forget it. Well, tell me about your day. Oh, it's been a while since I've spent so much time with Ellen. Lunching, shopping, gossiping. I feel like I've been through World War III. <laughs> How's Brad? Well, as domineering as ever, I suppose. But still, Ellen must like it. At least she says she does. Oh, darling, whose car is that outside? What car? In the driveway, parked behind one of those construction trucks. Probably belongs to one of the workmen. Would you like a drink, sweetheart? Oh, no, darling. What I want right now is a long, steamy, gorgeous bath. Maybe after. <laughs> I think I'll get some uh, fresh air. Just get the balance back. You sure you're all right? My recovery is spectacular. Of course we will, darling. I promise you. But I hope you'll be a little more careful with our keys than you are with these. I'm just so tired of stealing ours in someone else's house. Someone else's bed. I want my own things. My own man. You have him. I love you, Jenny. I love you. Thank you. 
Hotel? Now, this is Mr. Cole and the man who pays Miss Pierce's rent. I... Yeah, that's right, number 14. I... Uh, I just wanted you to know she's checked out. What? No, I don't know where she's gone. Or what her new boyfriend's name is, either. All I know is she won't need the room. You can keep the money for the rest of the month. Uh, hey! If you get a chance, give Speedy's rental a call. Tell them they can pick up her car in front of number 14. Better? Much. As a matter of fact, this much. Oh, Lazarus. <laughs> Darling, the police called. They said they found my car parked on Pacific Coast Highway. What was it doing there? You mean it was stolen? Well, I don't know what I mean. The highway patrol just called and they told me that my car had been towed away and where I was to pick it up tomorrow morning. I thought it was in the garage. Oh, well, yes, of course it was. The Carl called at about this afternoon and said it wouldn't be ready till tomorrow. Well, how'd you get the champagne? Well, I went out for some fresh air and uh, before I knew it, I was almost to Jack's Market, so I went on in. I got a lift back with one of those uh, uh, hippie types, you know, who keep setting up camps along the beach. Neil, do you suppose somebody took the car from Carl's garage? Well, I don't see how else it could have gotten to the highway. I'll really rake Carl over the coals for this. Neil. Guess what? I'm not hungry. You're not. I'm not for scrambled eggs. Although, I do admit to a sudden craving for champagne and linen. Is this the only bottle you bought? You? Yes. I'm going to surprise you. All right, surprise me. I know about Jennifer Pierce. What do you mean? I know you've been... seeing her. I just wanted to be open and honest. If this is a new start for us, I think it's important. Susan, I... It's very hard for me to talk about this. I feel so rotten. Well, don't talk about it. I don't need details or dates or reasons. Maybe some of the blame is mine. I don't know. It doesn't matter. What matters is what's going to happen now. How do you feel, Neil? Are we going to save our marriage? Neil? You know, it's strange. I've wanted to tell you for so long, not about Jennifer, darling, but about us. As a matter of fact, while you were in town today, I did a lot of thinking about us, about where we go from here. Because we will go on, Susan, better than ever before. I've been miserable and rotten, and I know it. It's entirely on my head. You couldn't be a better wife to me. But I know what I have to do now. It's over. There is no more Jennifer. I'll tell her tomorrow. I love you, Susan. Never more than now. Hello. Sergeant who? Oh, oh, uh, yes. Hello, Sergeant. <laughs> no, listen, I'm really embarrassed because you were absolutely right. 
Not the movies, but just Lady. Uh, she's right here with me now. Now, I really appreciate it. Many thanks. Uh, good night. Who was that? Just a policeman, darling. Well, what did you mean, not the movies, just late? Well, when you didn't show up right at nine, I got a little concerned, so I thought I'd better... You called the police? Of course. Well, and that's very dear of you, really. But everything's going wonderfully. As a matter of fact, I did. No, she wasn't that kind of girl at all. Oh, Ellen, I can't talk now. There's someone at the door. We'll catch up later, okay? Bye. Yes? Is your husband home, ma'am? No, he should be back any minute. Oh, well, I guess we'll wait till he gets here then. Oh, you can if you like, but I was the one that hired you. Is there anything wrong? Well, as a matter of fact, there is. Oh, would you show me? Sure. Well, surely there's another cement truck. No, ma'am, that's just it. Out this far from town, they just don't have extra equipment. The cement mixer we're supposed to use broke down. Well, what can we do? I mean, there's no sense of people hanging around then, is there? No, there isn't. I'd like to let the boys go home, if you don't mind. It seems like such a shame when it's already in smooth. By the way, ma'am, you got any pets or small children? No, why do you ask? Well, this morning when we came out, we found that somebody had been playing around with the reinforcing rods. How odd. Was anything damaged? No, no, no. It was easy to fix. And I just thought if it was your kids, you could tell them not to play around here till we're finished. You know, we don't want anybody to get hurt. Pardon me, ma'am. But did you lose this? Where did you find this? Right over there in the corner of the farm. I must have dropped it yesterday. Thank you for finding it before it was encased in cement. Glad to help. Brad, you can tell the boys to pack up and go. We'll finish tomorrow. Did you do it? Yes. It's all over now. She knows. She was packing as I left. It won't happen again, will it? With someone else? My love, I promise you. Why are the workmen leaving, Susan? Oh, the concrete truck can't get here till tomorrow. What? But I thought, I mean, we told them. We were very f firm about that. That floor had to be poured today. Oh, darling, it's not a tragedy. What's one day? I want that ground filled today. We're not being charged for the labor if the men don't work. Those men are v v violating a contract. What is that company's number, Susan? I'm not going to let them get away with it. Neil. What is the number? Why are you so angry? Susan!
White's construction? Who's in charge there? No, I mean the executive. All right, put him on. Hello, this is Neil Collins, Mr. White's on Long Branch Road. We made a deal with you to do some work here on a new pavilion. Now my wife tells me that your men have just walked off the job. And you can check with your foreman all you like. I'm telling you that concrete is supposed to be poured today and that that isn't happening. Now, I want to tell you something, mister. If those men aren't back here in an hour, and that cement poured before the sun goes down, I'm going to call my attorney. Or else I'll have you guys in court so fast it'll make your head spin. I don't want to calm down. Now, I've told you how we feel and what we plan to do about it. Now, the rest is up to you. Either honor your contract or... I'll expect your men here in an hour. your car? Oh, no, it's Speedy's. Speedy's? Car rental, ma'am. Why, do you want it? Oh, no, I was just curious. Uh, would you happen to know who's using it now? Oh. Um, a lady named Pierce, Jennifer Pierce. I guess she called him up, tell him to come get it. I guess she did. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. looking for a Miss Pierce? Oh, well, you ain't gonna find her here. Flew the coop. What? Yeah, I see them come and go, and this one's definitely gone. Up and off and traveling light, as you can see. Well, she wouldn't have left all of this. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm, she might. Girls nowadays don't spend a lot of time packing. And anyway, their escorts can buy them whatever they want when they get there. When they get where? Wherever they're going. This one wasn't no different from the others, except that maybe she was in a little more of a rush. She didn't even pretend to mess up the bed for me. You think she left last night? I know she did. I've seen things like this before. She ain't gonna turn up, if you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. You remember reading about those two sturdices, those airline girls disappeared, and on a boat ride to Catalina, of all things, washed up at Redondo Beach just as clean and white as sheets.
Hello, Neil. Susan here? She's shopping. Oh. We came out rather suddenly and really didn't have what we needed. Ah. Huh. She'll be back soon? Is there something I can do, Joe? Something I can tell her? I'm afraid the message might get a bit garbled. Meaning I'm not trustworthy. Trustworthy is not a word that comes immediately to mind. Look, Joe, I know you don't like me. Now, please come to the point. You're a quick study, Neil, a bright wheeler dealer. What do you care whether I like you or not, as long as Susan likes you? I don't. Well, you better. Because even though Susan is still crazy about you, I don't think the tax boys are. Oh, get off my back, Joe. I don't have the slightest idea what's going on in your law school brain. Oh, yes, you do. And I'm not getting off your back, as you so colorfully put it. I'm going to break it. And we're just about that far away from being able to prove that you are robbing Susan blind. And when we do, I suggest you say goodbye to any wild, romantic flights of fancy you may have. All this to save your niece from a fate worse than death. Now, after seven years. I've never changed my mind about you, and I doubt I ever will. But when we finish with the books, I guess you're going to be about two steps away from a five-year holiday on a work farm. Not as long as Susan loves me, because she's my wife, and she's the one who'd have to press charges. That's exactly why I'm here. And when I've finished, she'll press charges, I promise you. Joe, you've come all the way out here. Whatever for? I hate to tell you this, Susan, but it looks as though Neil has been dipping pretty heavily into your trust. It's his as well as mine. That's a commendable sentiment, but bad business. I've had a preliminary look at the figures, and he's investing in every wild, cockeyed scheme that... Any... Listen, Uncle Joe, I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but for the last time... I trust Neil totally. Now, is that why you came out here, to tell me this? I came out here, my dear, to tell you... Well, maybe this isn't the time. What? Never mind. Just one thing. Don't sign anything that is even faintly financial in character until the end of the month. Then we should have a complete rundown of the figures and know exactly what the dollars and cents damage is. You're not short of cash now, are you? Well, no, not that I know of. Has he asked you to sign anything lately? No, and it's not he, it's Neil. Oh. I do appreciate everything you've done and all the time you've spent helping us, really I do. Goodbye, my dear. No, the audit isn't finished, Al. Look, all it would be is a loan between friends. Just enough to hold it. Al, there won't be another chance. You know there won't. Now, this is the best thing that's ever come down the pike. That's what you told me. Right. Well, uh, thanks. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Neil, what's going on around here? What do you mean, what's going on? Just this. Last night when I came home, your friend Jennifer's car was here, parked in the driveway. Then this morning, a workman finds a locket that I'm certain belongs to her. You said it was over, Neil. Well, it is over, my darling. I told you it's over, and it is. 
But you said you didn't want to know details, Susan. You said that last night, remember? All right. When you came in, Jennifer was here. I mean, when your cab pulled up, she left quickly out the side entrance and across the lawn. That's all. Jennifer must have ESP because, just as I said, I'd already decided on my own that we were finished. Uh, about the locket, was it? Well, I've never seen Jennifer wear a locket, not that I can recall. Well, I can recall. You see, Jennifer Pierce and I had a little conference late yesterday afternoon about you. I went to her motel. I told her that I knew that I was going to fight to keep you, to keep our marriage. Susan, darling, you did that. Jennifer has a locket just like this. She was wearing it when we met. Neil, you said you told her it was over, finished this morning. Where did you meet her? At her motel, of course. She wasn't at her motel. I was. She hadn't even slept in her bed. Her clothes are still there. Neil, where is she? Now, honestly, where is she? How dare you follow me around? Doubt my word. Track me down. How dare you question me like this? As if I was some suspect person guilty of God knows what. I'm your husband, remember? I'm the man you married, remember? Neil, what's going on? Why are you so angry? Why are you so angry about everything? With that silly pavilion. What do you care when some cement is poured? Oh, cut it out. You come at me like a shark. Your uncle has a cell all picked out for me. My stockbroker is busy pulling off some incredibly sleazy deal. Well, I can't stand it anymore, do you hear? I just can't stand it! I'm sorry I blew up, my darling. I think deep down my insides are battling. There's so much stress at the office with your uncle, calling it quits with Jennifer, trying to make it all up to you. Everything is getting to me all at once. I understand, Neil. Uh, I'm sorry if I sounded like a shrew. Perhaps I should go into town for a while. So you can have time to sort things out a little. Don't you dare, my darling. The whole reason we're here at all is to be together, alone. To get to know each other again. Closer. Better. No, let's stay right here. Snug and warm in all this beauty and quiet. After all, what's a second honeymoon for?
Susan. Sweetheart, it's almost two o'clock. You need your rest. Well, I must have eaten something. My stomach just won't settle down. It must be catching. Except, in my case, I know why I can't sleep. Because you're not there with me. Come on, darling. You need your rest, and I need you. Besides, this workman will be here very early in the morning. This time we hope with what they need to finish the job. If you're wrong. Joe, it was all an accident, darling. God knows I didn't mean to hurt her, but she was so evil and destructive of everything you and I love. It became really horrible, Susan. She started screaming dirty things about, about you and about our love. I didn't even know what was happening. Suddenly, I'd hit her hard. I thought she was just stunned, knocked out. But she didn't move. She wasn't breathing. I tried to save her, but I couldn't. And then I had to do something with the body, didn't I? So you see, Susan, we're together now, forever. We have to stay in love. It's our only hope, our only refuge. You expect me to stay a prisoner in this house? With Jennifer out there? Knowing every day of my life that a woman has been murdered and buried right here? This whole thing can only serve to make us stronger and firmer and more loving of one another. The only thing that's going to make us stronger, Neil, is if we call the police. We tell them what no. happened. No. That would be a mistake. I made one mistake at the very beginning. I won't make another one. Mistake? You mean you... Is it me you wanted to kill? You wanted to kill me? I feel so responsible, Lieutenant. If only I hadn't... 
You see, I'd been working on some office papers. I guess I'd been at it so long and hard, I fell asleep at my desk. She must have gone out for a late swim. She liked that. She was raised near here, near the water. She was always crazy about the water, about swimming and skiing and sailing. Anyway, when I woke up, she wasn't here. I called. I should have been aware. I should have sensed something. But I didn't. I didn't. After a while, I began to feel a bit uneasy. I started looking around the house, around the grounds. But even when I found her robe, Lieutenant, even when I found her robe washed up on the beach below, I didn't understand. I mean, I thought she'd left it there. I'd forgotten it. You see, Lieutenant, our marriage, we've been having a little trouble with our marriage. I guess, I guess she just couldn't take it anymore. She must have been despondent, terribly upset. I wish I'd known. God, how I wish I'd known.
Hurry! The sand! He'll be buried! Hurry! For God's sake, hurry! 